Stay-at-home orders have meant different things to different people. When work is safer than home, employees who are surviving violence in their relationships and their families experience increased isolation and danger as a result of social distancing measures during the coronavirus pandemic. For some, workplaces and schools function as protective environments. The loss of work and school as an escape valve and the increased stress created by job losses, financial setbacks, and forced contact can increase the risk of violence and abuse. Your availability as a manager can make a difference for an employee surviving worsening partner violence. So thank you for taking the time to participate in this training. Managers and coworkers have always played a key role in extending support and helping survivors connect with services. Fulfilling this role is even more critical when the stay-at-home orders create barriers to safety due to increased isolation, communication limits, and inaccessible pathways to escape from abuse. Remember, there is no one-size-fits-all approach to safely supporting survivors. Many of the typical avenues to seek safety or provide support may no longer be viable. Today, we will share with you strategies for continuing to monitor the health and safety of employees you are concerned about and employees you know are in abusive relationships during these unprecedented times. Quarantine, isolation, and associated social, emotional, and economic stressors increase the risk of partner violence. The current crisis also makes it more difficult for victims to seek help. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, one in four women and one in seven men in the United States have experienced violence from an intimate partner in their lifetime, and the risks to victims are severe. Now, experts worry that all these numbers will increase dramatically during this period of social distancing and quarantine. Reports of increasing rates of partner violence are beginning to surface around the world. This growing trend is likely to continue throughout the pandemic and may represent just the tip of the iceberg as victims find themselves trapped with the perpetrator and unable to report or escape the abuse. In the United States, police agencies from across the country are also reporting an increase in partner violence calls. In addition to the risk of physical harm, victims are at greater risk of emotional harm and abuse. U.S. reports have surfaced of perpetrators using COVID-19 as a weapon against their victims, forbidding hand washing in an attempt to increase the victim's fear of contracting the virus and threatening to withhold medical treatment if the victim does contract the virus. As workplaces adjust to remote supervisory interactions, the following tips may help managers recognize when an employee may be experiencing violence at home. Respond in a manner that considers the survivor's physical and emotional safety needs and refer them to resources available to help during the COVID-19 pandemic. It is important to recognize that this is likely not the first time survivors have had to navigate complex situations because of the abuse by a partner. They are the experts on what they need to be safe. They are resilient, they are resourceful, they are survivors. As allies, there is still much we in the workplace can do to support them. Many of us typically spend more of our waking hours with our coworkers than our families. As a result, we often build strong and trusted relationships through work. These relationships are critical as interactions with managers and coworkers may be the only connection vulnerable workers have with the outside world, even if these interactions are limited to video chats, emails, and phone calls. Whether you suspect an employee is experiencing violence at home or they have disclosed abuse to you, there are ways you can virtually provide support. This is a time of significant stress, which can be difficult for all workers, and it puts survivors at increased risk of violence. All workers may be exhibiting some signs of emotional trauma that can impact their job performance, 
compounded by the challenges of balancing job duties and childcare and other family obligations. As a result, it may be difficult to recognize if someone is experiencing violence at home or is simply having a very normal and expected reaction to the pandemic and adjusting to a new normal of social distancing and isolation. Be mindful of unexplained changes in behavior that may signal something more serious. For example, perhaps an employee suddenly stops using video conferencing because of fear of exposing physical signs of injury or because their partner is monitoring them in the background. Or you notice an employee's writing style or correspondence no longer sounds like them because an abusive partner is reading and editing their emails. Correspondence may suddenly become sporadic or limited, such as extremely abbreviated phone calls with no small talk or personal conversation. These are potential indicators for the need for intervention or connection to resources for the survivor. In a remote work situation, regular check-ins can help provide a sense of normalcy and connection to the outside world to break through the isolation. Check in on your employee to listen and support them. Managers should routinely check in with the individuals they supervise, inquire about their needs and well-being, listen with empathy, offer support, and remind them of available workplace resources that may help, such as employee assistance programs. During team meetings, share information pertinent to support workers and their families' physical and mental health, such as workplace leave policies and potential accommodations, and identify community resources in case they or someone they know is in need of help. The use of video calls can enhance a manager's ability to see employees and help assess any concerns or issues. Adopt a leadership style that centers on prioritizing employees' needs. Recognize that employees' needs vary and care should be taken to understand and respond according to those needs. The measures taken to contain the spread of the pandemic, such as isolation, social distancing, and the inability to have close contact with friends and family outside of the household is emotionally traumatic for many of us but it can exacerbate the effects of underlying or current trauma a survivor of abuse experiences. Think about ways as a manager you can alleviate any pressure work responsibilities may add to the survivor's environment. Be aware that phone conversations, emails, and text messages may be monitored by an abusive partner. Expressing that you believe someone is experiencing violence and that you are concerned about their safety may unintentionally expose that individual to serious harm. Providing information broadly to all employees enables you to reach those in need without singling them out specifically. If someone you supervise or work with discloses that they are experiencing abuse at home, assess their immediate safety through a series of yes or no questions to limit the possibility that an abuser may overhear your conversation. For example, rather than, how can I help, ask, would you like me to give you the number for the domestic violence hotline via text? Or, do you need me to call the police? Consider agreeing on a code word that will alert you that they need an interruption from you or an outside intervention from the authorities. One code word or phrase could mean, please call the authorities. Another code word or phrase could mean, please call me on the phone so that I can move to another room for safety. Depending on the situation, a call may be able to interrupt violence in the moment. However, it is crucial for your employee who is experiencing violence to have control and the final say over if and how they would like you to interrupt or intervene. It is important to recognize that safety may look different during this time as we are all navigating an unfamiliar and challenging work environment. Domestic violence programs can help individuals experiencing violence explore their options and create safety plans. But remember that some of these programs have also been impacted by the pandemic. 
While their capacity and operations may be limited, most programs and hotlines are still open and are the best resources for survivors. If you are concerned about an employee, provide information on sick and safe leave policies and other workplace accommodations, along with local community resources, so they can seek safety without jeopardizing their job. Standing Firm has compiled a list of resources for victims that you can access at www.standingfirmswpa.org slash resources dash for dash victims. A victim's perpetrator may be limiting their access to basic supplies. So if your employee needs food, transportation, or other supplies, ask them what they need and help out when you can. You could offer to drop off food or cleaning supplies, send grocery gift cards or money through cash apps, or provide them with care packages of books, toys, and other supplies for children. You can also share what you know about local resources, like food bank hours or transportation programs. Staying in regular touch with those who have been laid off or cannot work, even if you're experiencing a similar work interruption, can provide an opening for an employee experiencing violence to ask for help and ensure access to supportive resources. And take care of yourself. You deserve support too. Worrying about someone you care about who is experiencing violence can take a toll on your emotional and physical health especially when there are so many stressful events occurring right now. Domestic violence hotlines are available to you as well and provide guidance if you are concerned about an employee. If your company offers an employee assistance program, the employee assistance program is available 24-7 to provide resources and guidance. Thank you so much for your time and attention today. We can all play an important role in helping victims of partner violence during this challenging period. Again, for a list of resources that you can provide to someone you're concerned about, please go to Standing Firm's website at www.standingfirmswpa.org slash resources dash for dash victims. Please stay safe and healthy.